In this episode, I'm going to look at a Mission PCM 7000 single disc CD player. This features the famous TDA 1541 DAC that was so popular in audiophile circles because it has a unique sound. This one has a unique problem. It's not playing CDR discs. Well, I don't know if it's a unique problem, but it's not playing CDR discs, so let's see what's wrong with it. So before I even power it up, let's take the top off it and see who actually made this one. Any guesses? Hmm? Anyone got a guess who made this? Phillips, that's who made this. So let's turn it on and see what's wrong with it. It's got the good old rocker on type of pickup. Let's just see whether it plays. It does not appear to play. Of course, these machines are so old they might not support CDR. We'll try a regular CD on it. Because some of these old machines did not like recorded discs. So we'll try a stamp disc with a bunch of sound effects on it. See if this one will play. And then take it from there. doesn't appear to be playing either. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, it might, there we go, it took a long time to read the table of contents out on this one. I'll try a different type of CDR, see whether it will read this one. Some of the problems with the, some of the older CD players is that they did not like CDRs at all, because they were made before CDR became the standard, and the pickups just don't like to read them. I have some that are temperamental like that, that won't read CDRs, if their life depended on it. This one appears to be the case, it's not reading this one either. Now we could have a, we could have a bad pickup, that's another thing, it could be, if the pickup itself could be getting weak. Oh, it did read it, it just took a while, let's just see whether it'll play it or whether it's going to skip. This is a music bakery disc, so I can play this one. But it's spinning, but it's not playing. Incidentally, these units have a metal bottom on it, but it's just decorative. If you remove this plate, it's just there to add weight, basically. If you remove the metal plate, you'll find that it's just plastic underneath here, so you cannot access the board from the bottom. Like some people think, this is just a decorative plate. Underneath here, there's plastic. I am going to proceed and play my stamp disc and just see how far it'll play before something happens because I understand that the problem is it's skipping so obviously can't play this for you guys but I'm going to listen to it off camera and just see whether it does skip. Now, of course these players are quite popular in audiophile groups because they're audiophile circles because of the TDA 1541 DA converter. The uh, 1541 has a sound all of its own and it's very well uh, respected in the area of uh, DDA converters. It's a very nice sounding converter. I have one, I have a Philips that uses one and I, I do admit that that player has a different sound. It just it just sounds good. I mean, it's just, they sound good. A lot of CD players sound like crap, but these ones actually have a really nice crisp sound. This player actually has two sets of outputs on it. Right, it has a second set of output which goes through this other board. I have a feeling that that's probably an electronic attenuator so you can control the volume and it may have some additional circuitry, additional filtering. Mine has two boards as well. Mine's got a, a, a secondary filter which they say tube output, but it doesn't have tubes on it. My Philips, it has one that just says tube output, but it's not. It's just an additional filtering that gives it a different, slightly different roll off to make it sound more like vacuum tubes. I don't know whether that is the same on this one or whether this is an electronic attenuator, but it does sound a little different than the pure 
output from the uh, DA converter. Here's something for the vinyl guys that will sit there and, and, and argue till they're blue in the face that their vinyls sound better. Track down a player with a 1541 uh, DA converter and then get back to me. Because the sound quality off of these units is fantastic. They're not the only ones that sounded good. There was a lot of good Sonys in the, in the ES line that actually had a very good sound too, but um, a lot of players that followed this, they went to a cheaper a cheaper DA converter and um, yeah, they didn't have the sound quality that these 16-bit models did. We're going to take a look at the optical pickup on this unit. Make sure the pickup itself is not dirty. And we'll check the board. I gotta pull this. I, I gotta pull the board out, or pull the whole pickup out to uh, do any work on this one because there's no access on the bottom. Motor spins freely. There's nothing binding or anything on the pickup, which is not expected on these types with the swing arm. To lift out the pickup, I just remove the retaining screw at the back here. It's a Torx like the rest of them. should lift out to reveal the circuit board on the bottom. These are known for capacitors to go bad in the servo circuit so we're going to check them out and see what shape everything is in. So we'll unplug the optical pickup from the main board. the catches and lift out the board itself one more plug at the front okay you can now check the servo caps We look at some of the small caps here on the servo board. You'll see that uh, this one, for example, is a little bit out of spec. It's a 33 microfarad, 16 volts. I'm measuring 5.6 ohms, and uh, it should be somewhere between. Well, 22 would measure 3.6 maximum, 
47 1.6 so we're above the spec that one there should be replaced for starters these other two probably also are in going bad that was 1.1 that was not too bad 1.2 those two are actually not probably not in that bad of shape 47 microfarad so 47 microfarad yeah those ones are okay that one is, is certainly uh, starting to creep up for sure 1.1 that one should be okay 1.2 that one also should be okay there's a couple of other ones over here 220s at uh, I think these are both 220 at 16 volts so we'll just check these two out over here these almost look like they were replaced but I guess not 0.5 that one's okay 0.4 those two are also probably okay just the one this one here is uh, measuring a little bit high so that one, oh, there's a green one over here too. What is this green one? Green usually means that they're a low ESR type or, or something special when they're a, a different color. This one is a, what is this one? It's a 1.5 microfarad. That's why they're oddball sizes because, uh, or they're odd, or different color because they're an oddball size. A 1.5 microfarad is uh one that I won't have for sure but let's just check the ESR on this one anyway and we see it's 3.4 but uh, that's probably okay uh, this is going to be a low ESR value uh, conventional ones they can't even, they don't even show up here this connection on this one looks like it might be a bit faulty get a closer look at it yeah that one might be a cracked connection right there I'll show you guys this one Complaint on this is that it intermittently doesn't work. But uh, if we look at that connection down here, you know, that's a suspect connection right there. Same with that one. I'm going to, oh, some more of them on here. Look at some of these connections. They just look bad. I'm going to over, I'm going to reflow. See? I'm going to reflow this board. I'm going to change that one cap, first of all, that, uh, that looks bad. And I'm going to go over this board, the servo board. As you can see, there's a bunch of them here that just don't look good. There's another one there. And then I'll test this unit and test it some more. So let me get my iron warmed up. We'll change out that one cap, first of all, that is going high. And uh, retouch touch up all the connections on the board here. We look at a new 33 microfarad cap that I've got here. 0.9. So the other one is certainly drifting. So we'll change that one out and say redo all the connections on here. Kind of eye this one on its side. So that's a new cap in place. I'm just saying it's going to go over the board now because as I pointed out a few minutes ago, there's a bunch of connections on here which leave a lot to be desired. Just they're cracked. And because this was an intermittent problem, 
you always have to be concerned about connections. I don't know about the CDR compatibility. The old cap fell apart when I took it out. Look at that, it just, it just disintegrated when I pulled it out of the board. The, the, uh, the wrapper comes off of it. Interesting. Anyway. I'm going to go over the board and uh, anything that looks like it's uh, bad, like these ones here, for example, I'm just going to redo them all. Because there's a bunch of them on here that really, like these ones right here that I'm pointing at with the solder. See the cracks on the, on the, uh, maybe it's hard to see the reflections. Let's see if I can get the reflection to be a little bit less, uh, less prominent on the board. But as you can see, the uh, some of these connections here don't look to be too good. Get a good close up there. You see what I mean? So I'm going to go over these connections and make them all good. Hopefully I'm in frame. I can't see what I'm doing. I'm going to put the board back in and we'll try it again and hook it up and let it run and see what it does. Get the laser plug back in. It's a type of zero insertion force socket that holds it in place.
think that's in all the way. I'll find out pretty quick. All right, let's try let's try a CDR in it first. It did not play before. Neither of them played, so they wouldn't play at all. Let's try this CDR to see if it plays. I would say that we've got a big improvement because this disc, as you guys saw before, would not spin or would spin. It would just spin. It wouldn't play anything. Let's try the other CDR and see if this one plays. And that one also plays, so I'm gonna let this unit play. Because I think I fixed it. That one cap, that 33 microfarad cap in the servo circuit is, uh, was the problem I believe on this one. And the solder connections also could have been contributing factors but uh, I'm gonna let this thing play now and if it can play through these discs without any issues then I'm going to finish this one up and say that this one's done but I'm pretty confident right now that that's all that was wrong with it was that 133 microfarad cap that the ESR had started to creep up on. Changed it out, touched up the connections on the board, everything it's playing now when it wasn't playing before. As you saw, these two discs, these two CDR discs did not read whatsoever. So I'm gonna let it play and see what happens. A beautiful display on this unit. Love it. Look at how big it is. Holy smoke. Nice big vacuum fluorescent display on this one. Track number 13 now, playing this dark CDR. When this disc finishes, I'm going to play another CDR all the way through, and uh, of course some stamp discs, but I am pretty confident now that we've got this problem solved, just that one capacitor is bad. Well, I'm now into the other disc, this is the Staples brand, and it's been playing fine too. So I think I'm going to close this video off now. This one is obviously working. It's gone through two discs now. Well, gone through a disc and a half. Been listening to it the entire time. Haven't noticed any skipping or anything. 
So I think we can finish this one off and say this one is a success. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.